Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that we may be open to your invitation in our lives always. We ask that we may seek you. We ask that we may come to know everything you're calling us to know, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is uh, a day when we look at a rather interesting concept, which is throughout the Bible. It comes to us from the 22nd chapter of Matthew 1 through 14, and it looks at uh, a common um, venue or or motif that the Lord uses, which is the kingdom of heaven as a banquet. This kind of reminds me kind of a bit of a tangent. Uh, However, I have to admit, um, it's, it's something to reflect upon. I have never really liked the movie The Shining. Everyone say this is this great movie and everything else. No, I'm, uh, it's my understanding that among the people who did not like The Shining was Stephen King. And I don't know if I brought this up to you before, but uh, of course he wrote the original book. Maybe one of these days I'll read that. If you don't know anything about Stephen King, you will, uh, from what I understand, you will hardly meet a single human being in the entire universe that loves writing as much as Stephen King loves writing. <laughs> and he's well known for that. Uh, whether you read his books or not, Whether you enjoy what he writes or not, Stephen King is someone who was well known for loving writing. And uh, it's it's also my understanding, and if I'm wrong here, I I apologize. I don't think I am. Uh, I don't think he liked The Shining as a uh, demonstration of his book. Now, I have never read The Shining. Maybe one of these days I should. But one of the reasons why I don't like it is I never understood it. And the reason why, and I don't want to necessarily give away the ending or anything else, but the reason why I don't like The Shining is because, um, how can I best put it? Um, You have this understanding that the horror part of the movie, besides the other parts, the horror part of the movie is that someone is stuck in a party. And I've never understood how that is scary. It reminds me of time. This is a true story. Uh, Some relatives of mine uh, were telling me about neighbors that moved in were were from South America. And they were having a, a struggle because they used to throw these parties like every weekend. And I looked at them and said, Okay, are you serious? They said, yeah, yeah, it's really driving people crazy. And they're from, they from a very nice suburban area. I said, you do realize they throw the best, best parties. I was working with um, Central and South Americans at the time. And they said, no, we didn't know that. And I said, if you want, I'll go over and talk to them. And they said, are you kidding? You're going to be there all night as well. And I said, I don't know about that, but, uh, but that's true. And, and, and so that's my point. It's like, okay, the scary part of this movie, the ultimately scary part of this movie is this man is stuck in a party, but isn't that a Christian perspective? Isn't that what Jesus says? And we wouldn't look at it as apparently it isn't looked at that the man is stuck in a party. It's he's in a party. And that's the venue. That is the motif that you, you Jesus uses a lot to go out and invite people to the banquet, to the celebration. So I've never understood The Shining for that that reason. Now I should read the book, I suppose, uh, because uh, again, the the, the the Shining is written by uh, Stephen King, and among writers, this is well known. The very few writers would ever deny the fact that Stephen King loves writing pretty much more than anybody else. He really loves to write, and I do believe he really loves to teach writing. And he has a book called On Writing, which is kind of like the, pardon the pun, the Bible of writing. But he's always been like that, and he that's what he does. And literally in writing, by the way, I know I'm getting a bit of a tangent, but I am a writer. Little in writing, by the way, people say, well, this is the Stephen King idea. This is how Stephen King, or this is what Stephen King, people, oh, okay, that's what Stephen King does. Not to become like Stephen King, but to look at some of his habits. And again, uh, it, the Shining book may be different, but I've never understood the idea of the scary part of the movie is, which is that you're stuck in a party. Because what does Jesus talk about here? He invites people to 
party to this wedding party and they're all invited, but they're all, well, we're too busy and everything else. Well, think of that. How often does the Lord invite you to Mass? How often, if you're in the Alston, if if you're in the Alston, Brighton area, uh, how often do I say, come to the parish, help me to build up the parish? You know, if you come, let's talk about it. Let's help build up the parish. Um, because what we want to do is build up the way the Lord wants the parish to be. And that is when the, within the context of who we are as Catholics. It's that invitation. And what is the Lord inviting you to? Well, in fact, he is inviting you to a banquet, to the receiving of his body and blood uh, at Mass. Now, I know there are evangelicals listening that may not understand that, and some people may misinterpret it, or uh, re- let me use a different word, interpret it differently, but that's how we Catholics understand it. We understand that what is brought forth at Mass is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So you are invited to that, and there are some famous stories of people who understand that, even if they aren't Catholic, and then look at Catholics who don't appreciate it appreciate that powerful stories but you were invited to and that that same motif we can see in this uh today's gospel which you can find from bible.usccb.org or whatever missile that you may be using and look at it look at this invitation to the party we're going to talk more on the other side of the break you're listening to saint anthony overnight from saint anthony parish in alston massachusetts we'll be right back right after this I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. And don't forget uh, our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. Check out our website. Check out the archives of the show. Check out our Substack newsletter. Check out all kinds of things over there. And uh, don't forget, you have a standing invitation to come to our parish every single Monday through... No, every single Sunday. Sorry, I'm a little bit off. Every single Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here at uh, St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts. So come check that out so anyway uh yeah that you have that standing invitation to come to experience what we have to offer to be to uh come learn what it is that we believe so that you too can come to participate in uh the fullness of what it means to be a catholic and especially saying this to those who are unchurched but were once catholic and uh, you know i'm not if you're going to a another church that isn't catholic and that's where you are going i'm not here to say leave them and come here i'm not here to say if you're going to another parish leave them and come here i'm not saying that at all i'm saying to those who maybe want to uh, come in and take a look at what we do with the catholic church or who are from a catholic background and want to come and check out what we do and help us to build the parish as we're called to build it that would be great you heard some of my talk earlier in the week, which actually is all about what it means to be a Catholic, but comes from perspectives in other parts of the world. There's an interesting concept that uh, I uh, saw from my experience, both working with the Latino community in the United States and also working in South America. And that is that what for example, what what you will see in communities is the women run the domestic community. That means within the town. So you have the people in the town and many of the women run the town while many of the men take care of business outside of the town. Basically, it, they're not necessarily outside of the town. They may be just doing business that comes from outside of the town doing you know shipping or or doing a business where they have to be involved in shipping or you know all those kinds of things that's very common in the community so for example while the man is doing we'll say construction work the women are involved in that kind of work that's involved in the town those things that keep the town going and 
uh, what you will find in the women that run that town is that they hold a huge amount of authority. So you will go to communities here in the United States, here in the Boston area, that are Spanish language communities. They're rooted in some of their, their, their home countries. And they will use a term for women, which is dona. There is no equivalent in the United States. The closest thing I can possibly think of is the British term dame. And dame is a term that is the female version of sir. Um, But in, we'll say, the Italian communities and obviously the Spanish communities, and and Portuguese communities, Portuguese speaking communities, you will hear the term Don. You'll even refer to bishops as Don. Um, Bishop Jose will be Don Jose in, we'll say, Brazil. Um, it'll be Monsignor um, Jose in El Salvador, for example. But the reason why that's important is there's a female version referred to all the uh, uh, women of authority in a community, and it is Doña. And they will say, Doña Flora, Doña Maria, Doña. And that means this is a woman which of whom you have tremendous respect because she is one of the authorities in the town. You find the same thing in parishes. So you see all of that model working together. And when you see that model working together, then you have an understanding of what that model is all about. So that's one of the important things to understand that there are different models there. So again, one of the things that I've dealt with is people will say, well, there's no room for women in the Catholic Church. I'm sorry. Uh, That is not true. And if they were to say that in another part of the world, they go, of course there is. The other thing which you would find is many people will say to hear that women should be ordained. You go to South America where women have a very powerful role in the church and say women should be ordained. They go, oh, no, they don't. No, they would say, we don't want to be ordained. We have the role that we have, which is a very powerful role in the church. So you can see all these different models come together. And in the midst of that, we're all called to come together and be part of this banquet that the Lord invites us to. But if we turn around and say, I'm too busy, I'm not, then you have no part in it. And that's one of the things the Lord is saying. And that's all of us. All of us are called to this. We'll talk more tomorrow. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day. And remember us at catholicaudiomedia.com. In Cristo vivimos.